we shall move on to the main event of the podcast. Oh, I'm so, so excited. Listeners, we're going to do our own little fantasy draft rankings for the 2020 NHL draft. We don't know when that's going to happen, but anyway. Um, me and the guy, well, I think Alex, you were the one who did this draft. You did the draft lottery, right? Yeah, I did on tankathon.com. Mm-hmm. And Love we, the name, by the way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, why don't you read the order that we ended up getting for the draft, and then we can get into this. Okay. So, with the first overall pick, should I go 15 to 1? I changed my mind. Okay. okay. Whatever yeah. you want, man. I'll make you 15 yeah. to 1. Uh, 15th overall, Columbus. Bah. Didn't Montreal move. of this. Didn't move. 14th overall, the Florida Panthers. The biggest disappointment in hockey. They didn't move either. The. Uh, with the 13th overall pick goes to the New York Rangers. The 12th overall pick goes to the Winnipeg Jets. That's tough. Yeah. The 11th overall pick goes to the best team to never make the playoffs, the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Alex, I don't know how much work this would be. Can, you know the... um. That music. What's what's that game show where um they oh god what what is it? Terry Crews hosted it for a bit. Family Feud. No, not no. That's that's Steve Harvey. Did he not host Family Feud for a little bit? <laughs> no, no. Steve Harvey does Family Feud. No, I know Steve Harvey does Family Feud. I know that. Hold on. I'm sorry, to, but like, there's a certain thing of music that you should play over this. Um, I have the Fox NHL that Fox NFL draft music. I like it. Sorry, go on. So you said Minnesota With the was the eleventh overall. Pick. The tenth <laughs> overall pick, the Arizona Coyotes. But that pick has been traded to the New Jersey Devils for Taylor Hall. Mm-hmm. And this is where the fun begins. No, it's not. Dropping down one spot. This is Montreal great. Montreal Canadiens. You did this the till they moved out. Ninth overall. Pick. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did it once. Uh, with the eighth <laughs> overall pick, the Buffalo Sabres moved down one spot. You, you want to know how funny that this is, that the Sabres are eighth and Montreal are ninth? The year the Habs drafted Sergachev and the Sabres drafted Alex Nylander, Buffalo was eighth, Montreal was ninth. <laughs> so both teams... Haven't gone anywhere. Continue, please. <laughs> With the seventh overall pick, moving down one spot, the New Jersey Devils with their own pick. With the sixth overall pick, moving down one spot, Daniel's favorite team, the Anaheim Ducks. With the fifth, yeah, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> with the fifth overall pick, dropping down one spot again, the Los Angeles Kings. Ooh. <laughs> and this is where it gets fun. With the fourth overall pick in the 2020 NHL draft, the San Jose Sharks. Jokes on you, they don't have their own pick. That is going <laughs> to the Ottawa Senators. I like that build up. The third <laughs> overall pick, the most NHL thing to ever happen. Moving up six spots is the Chicago Blackhawks. Where's Brian Burke when you need him to yell about how dumb that is? <laughs> With the second <laughs> overall pick, s- sadly moving down one spot, the Detroit Red Wings. A lottery should be three teams, four teams, five teams max. <laughs> Ridiculous. And with you the- know how much work I had to use? <laughs> You know, he almost drafted Sidney Crosby, okay? Did you know that he drafted <laughs> Morgan freaking Riley? Yeah. And, the, and did you mention the Sedin twins? And the Sedins, damn it. Uh, apparently, um, he didn't want to get Bobby Ryan second with the Muddy Ducks. Apparently, he was calling for, like, Jack Johnson, but, like, his uh, scouts were like, no, take Bobby Ryan. Yeah. With the first overall pick. The team that deserves it the least because their owner absolutely sucks. The Ottawa Senators. 
<laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Right, okay, so it's gonna be well, me who. Hold was on. To... Pardon? Is is that we're going through? Yeah. First, Each just pick. to explain, we're playing. Yeah, I am. Yes. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting yeah. there. No, no, I'm, 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 no, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're going 15 to 1 or 1 to 15? No, 1 to 15. Okay. <laughs> Just, I'm going to go play Animal Crossing, you know what? <laughs> we're going 1 to 15. We're all going to say okay. our first overall pick, then our second overall pick, third, etc, etc, etc. Because going 1 okay. to 15, each of us is just is going to get boring. Okay. Last year, number yeah. one, what a surprise. Number one, the Ottawa Senators select... Alexis Lafreniere from Ramuski Oceanic of the QMJHL. Can I be honest? I think this was the most obvious pick in the draft. Uh, I think so too. I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. know. Actually, no. I might. I might throw a wrench in that. I don't know, oh, guys. <laughs> Dylan Holloway really had me going. <laughs> he had fifty-two uh, in yeah. fifty-two games. He had a hundred and twelve points. That's stupid. How good he is. I think. It's obvious, like he's playing his first year, like that's just he has to. Yeah, he's yeah he's first over. It's not a question, undisputed. I will have you, let me let me read you what what um, Sam Cosentino said, draft guru. Okay. Quote: This is from his uh, his April article for the draft rankings. Here's a certainty amidst all the uncertainty in the world today. Alexis will be the first player off the board. Oh, for sure. So we all have Alexis Lafreniere, correct? Uh, yeah. I have Yaroslav Askarov, uh, first overall. Bastard. You know, I'll see. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see a goalie in like the top five again, like one one day. You know, I don't want Sidney Crosby. To be, I mean, that's really of Carey Price to be the last one. But first of all, uh, he was pissed off. Yes, it should be Carey. Second of all, how dare you get that scrub? Scrub Sidney Crosby. Well, I was talking about goalies. It was by I was thinking of 05. The man, the myth, the goddamn legend. Harry <laughs> Price. Why would he you say fish. this? He was mowing his uh, lawn when he got his contract extension, you know that? Know. Small tidbit, but I think Askarov's gonna be better than Spencer Knight, but like okay, we'll we'll keep going. Sorry, for that. I just thought of the goalies. I had to say Askarov in there, I don't know. Okay, so we all picked Alexis Lafreniere. Yeah. Okay. Iceberg, Daniel. <laughs> Titanic. I had a Brian Brick moment. I'm like, I'm going to take Askarov first overall, but my scouts are like, don't do it. <laughs> okay. So hey, this, is, this, no. this, is, this is, the I think, an interesting pick for me. And I think Adam picked the same person because we had this discussion before Daniel came on. With the second overall pick, the Detroit Red Wings will select Tim Stutzel. From Manhunt mm-hmm. in the DEL. And I'll tell you why. Now, yeah, he played 41 games, only got 34 points. But he's playing with men. Okay, I just want to point that out. Um, he's under contract till 21-22. And, and, and I know that sounds problematic, but I think that would be good for Detroit. You know, he could jump in to the NHL in two years. You know, just as the rest of their prospects are progressing too right like yes philip zadina is coming next year um who else who who's the other guy i'm missing there's joe a bu- right joe like there's a bunch of guys that they Michael have Rasmussen. In, right like there's a bunch of guys they have in their in their ahl team right now who in two years will be jumping up to the nhl and i think at that point if you bring in tim stutzel i don't see that as an issue whereas there's other players who I could have picked second overall, or one other player in particular, who could have been picked second overall, and you know could potentially make the jump next year, which I don't see how that would make sense for Detroit, considering they are going to suck. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, oh sorry, can no, I say my second yeah, overall? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I I would have picked Quentin Byfield here. Yeah. To be honest, um, you know, solid Canadian rule junior guy. Um, and also, like, I, I see a first-line center potential with him. Okay. To be honest, like, I know they have Dylan Larkin. They have Michael Rasmussen coming up. But I don't see those guys as franchise, like, centers. But 
it just it's a guy that I I kind of see there in Detroit that he kind of fills that middle for them. Like even if he doesn't become like that clear cut bona fide number one guy, it's still like more center depth for them. Right. Mm. Larkin Larkin I feel is not a terrible one two to have there. It's no. not. Oh, uh, I also had Tim. <laughs> I also had Tim Suits for second. I won't lie. I had Byfield second until last night, and I was like, you know what? Let's have some fun. Yeah. Uh, just because there has been. This is also from Cosentino's article, by the way. For those of you who don't know, Sam Cosentino was basically the Bob McKenzie of the draft. Just so everyone knows, uh, his word is gospel. So, and he said that there's been a lot of talk about Stutzel probably going over Byfield. Um, Byfield again is in that rough position where I believe this was his first World Junior, so he didn't really. He was more of a fourth line guy, seeing that uh, Lafreniere was last year, and so he didn't really get the spotlight. And unfortunately, I, he didn't really get a chance. With, I believe he plays for Sudbury. Yes. To, yes, to really get that showing of a deep playoff run. So I think that might hurt his stock a bit. But that being said, um, you can make a point that these first three guys, maybe if you want to include, spoiler alert, I have Marco Rossi fourth. What? Um, maybe you can make an argument. All these guys, what? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. That's not how I, I fixed for it. Most of these guys could be first overall picks in a lot of other yeah. drafts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just to point out, yeah, I also have Stutzel uh, third. So, I'm so assuming. I, no, you have Alex, Stutzel second. Second, sorry. And I'm guessing, Alex, do both of us have Byfield third? Yes. Sure. Alex, who's your third overall pick? Quentin Byfield. Sorry, Daniel. 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 Oh, for my third pick? Yeah, sorry. I keep Um I don't know, because like I thought like clear cut Tim Stutzel if we just went by the talent. All right. But I'm just kinda thinking like what is Chicago gonna do if they have to kind of wait for this guy? Because like by the time he comes in, like Taves is gonna be like thirty three, thirty four. Yeah. Uh, Duncan Keith is like gonna be thirty eight. <laughs> They kept Corey Crawford, he's like 37, and I don't mm-hmm. know if they're going to be like, you know, they're going to be building or they're going to be that entr- in that transition type well, of mode. So like, who their GM is. Yeah, so like if they take that long-term approach and they don't want to tear it down like Tim Stutzel, but if they want to go on something I think they want to keep building on, it's going to be either like Lucas Raymond or Jamie Drysdale. Okay. Okay, I, I like that. That's interesting. I put Quinton Byfield, and I think, uh, you know, 82 points, 45 games. Um, and, and I really think he's another guy out of the, the three, the first three guys that I talked about. I think next year, I think you could potentially see, I mean, he's not because he's under contract, but he could make that jump to the NHL if he wasn't under contract. Mm-hmm. But with Byfield, because he can make the jump, I think that's another interesting piece to put in to um, to put in to Chicago simply because you know th- that's at what the point I think uh, that's the point they're at now where okay they have Taze they have Kane they have these guys who essentially they're building around whereas okay mm-hmm. let's throw Quinton Byfield in who did they have who did they bring up this year uh, Kirby Doc who they had drafted last year or right last year or two years ago uh last year that's kind of something too that i thought of that it's just something chicago is going to do again where they don't have the cap to kind of like bring in a lot of depth guys so they're going to keep using their pro like i don't think he should have been in the nhl this year right i think he could have used i don't think it's going to stunt his growth nhl development necessarily but i think Going back and even just dominating, and uh, he was came out of the WHL. Mm-hmm. Could potentially could have been good for him. Like I just kind of felt like, okay, I'm gonna use the World Juniors example again, but he should have been sent down. Like the way Chicago, where Chicago was in December, I'm like they don't they didn't really need him. Right. Yeah. In I terms of the right, that. like the standings. I could see that. Okay, so we've all given our third overall pick. So. Uh, uh, just one note on Chicago I wanted to say uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they did take Stutz and take that long term approach because yeah we talk about Tate and Case where there'll be but we also gotta remember in a few years where will how much better will Adam Buckfist be great first name uh, again you say Kirby Doc 
They'll still have good old um, yeah. Alex the Brew, Brinkett, Alex the Brinkett, Dylan Strom, and there's Alex a yeah, there's Dominic also, Kubalik, Dominic Kubalik, and there's also a young defenseman they drafted out of the queue last year whose name escapes me, but the Habs were very very high on him, uh, but they stole him. Those bastards. Um, anyway, though, I would be I wouldn't be surprised if they took him. Anyway, uh, but shall we move on to fourth overall, where yes. I want to talk about this because I have Marco Rossi. I do not have Marco Rossi. I have, Why? I, because I have Jamie Drysdale, right-handed defenseman. Absolute superstar. He is, you know, you look at their Ottawa's defense uh, prospect. Obviously, you have uh, Lassie Thompson. You have Eric Branstrom. I mean, Thomas Shabbat is still on his entry-level contract. I think that's a great piece to add third overall, uh, to add, sorry, fourth overall. And he happens to be right-handed, where a lot, like Lassie Thompson, uh, I believe he's right-handed. But Shabbat, left-handed. Branstrom, left-handed. Like I think that's that's pretty solid. It, it, it's a solid p- team for them, and they already they already have you know you're now adding Alexis Lafreniere. You still have all the guy. You still have all the guys you have on your team right now. Uh, who else do they not have up? The names aren't coming to me. But you know Drake Alex Bath- Formington, Alex Formington, Drake Batherson, Josh Norris. I, I mean the the list goes on and on on the forward prospects they have. Is offense some necessarily something they're going to be targeting with the first overall pick? Damn right they will be. But I think Jamie Drysdale is. I mean from what I've read and I and then I end up going on YouTube and watching him play. This guy looks like an absolute beast. Mm-hmm. Daniel, before I defend Marco Rossi. Um, to be honest, I kind of agree. If they're taking a forward first overall, you're going to go with Jamie Drysdale. Like, in the event Chicago doesn't take him third and they go with Stutzel or Lucas Raymond or Marco Rossi, depending. Um, I think, yeah, Jamie Drysdale. They're going to go with that. Mm-hmm. So the reason I put Drysdale... A spot later, and like, trust me, I love J- Jamie Drysdale. Remember that wicked goal he had in the World Juniors when he yeah. came in because uh, Bowen Byron was sick or something. Um, plus, Drysdale, what a sick name. I know. That is pretty nice. guys. <laughs> like Seabrook the Racing Horse. But, but anyway. It's not as good as McTaggart. No, not Santiago McTaggart <laughs> out of a. Anyway, though, um, the reason I put Mar- Marco Rossi here is I look at. I do look at Ottawa's defense, and I say, yeah, you got Lassie, the Finnish wonder. You got Shabbat, who is, in my opinion, a top pairing Canadian defenseman, and of course Branstrom. So, and I, I look at yes, Lafreniere is a fantastic winger, and you've got Kachuk, who's also a good little winger. But then I look at their center depth, and I know there has been questions about whether Rossi can get at center. But I, I look at the fact that he has played it again as an Ottawa 67. Y'all love that. He's a smart player, and I just if it's me, I I say. You want to make sure you have your great defensemen, your puck movers, which the Sens already have in the system. And I look, I would, you need to have a great centerman in the pipeline for the right. future. And that's why I, if I'm them, I would take Marco Rossi. Okay. okay. So uh, number five is where Wait, I had James. Who did Rossi. Daniel take fourth overall? Yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Oh, me? Um, what did I say? So, I, so Lafreniere. Uh, Quentin Byfield. Um, I'd like a toss up at third between Lucas Raymond and Jamie Drysdale, but I'll go with Jamie Drysdale at third. Okay. So I guess Lucas Raymond falls at fourth. Okay. You're gonna put really Lucas. I, I have Raymond in. I have Raymond at six, but you're that's oh, interesting man. because Raymond has been somebody who it feels like. Everyone's been singing this. I remember early in the year, he was top five. Um, uh, there was talk. I remember Constantino said at the start of the year that if anyone was going to challenge that for a year, it was going to be some of the guys in Sweden, I think. Yeah, Holtz, Holtz and Raymond. And, and Raymond were one of them. So, and oh. Raymond, for a lot of people, was falling. So you're saying you have Raymond where, sorry? Oh, sorry. I, small mistake. So when we talk about Tim Stutzel, I'd actually have him fourth. 
Okay. And then Lucas Raymond fifth. My apologies. All right, that's that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Because uh, I'm thinking of the whole Chicago thing. They don't want to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fair enough. Sorry, Daniel. Uh, okay, so you, so f- we're going on to fifth now, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. So yeah, I have Drysdale at fifth. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's going much farther than that. He, here's like, um, here's Gooley and like Sanderson, and then there's Drysdale. Yeah. So uh, it's that easy. Yeah. That was fifth. Daniel. Oh, my fifth is Lucas Raymond. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, my <laughs> fit, my fifth overall pick is Marco Rossi. Hey, uh, I'll go. A hundred and twenty points in fifty-six games in the OHL. Um, you know, he's he. You said he had issues playing. There, there might be issues with him playing center. I mean, from what I've read, he had his, has a good hockey IQ, which is as a center. I think extremely important. We talk mm-hmm. about the center usually being that two-way type of guy. Um, you know, uh, my guess is he's probably going to go back to the OHL next year because that's his only option. Like, I don't know if he necessarily makes the team out of fifth would be LA, so I don't know if he necessarily makes the team out of camp. And, you know, it's quite stupid that they can't go to the AHL, so I guess he's going back to the OHL. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, are we good for fifth, though? Go to sixth now. Yes. Okay, go to sixth. Yeah, yeah, this is where I have Lucas Raymond, by the way. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's to Anaheim, because I really like... Wouldn't you love that, Lucas Raymond, Anaheim Ducks? Yeah. Um, you tell me, who do you have at six? Me? Oh, me or Alex? Uh, either or. I love both of you equally. Okay. Um, I have Alexander Holtz. Okay. Um, oh, goal. it's funny to... S- huh? Goals, goals, goals. Yes. Also, like, you know, Swedish guy. You know, the Ducks always try to take those type of picks. Uh, yeah. They love their Swedes. Big body guy. Kind of compliments what they already have gotten in the past drafts. Like Isaac Lundestrom, Trevor Zegras. Um, it's the kind of guy where, you know, he's either going to play right away or the Ducks are just going to be patient with him. Let him play in the World Juniors. Let him play in Sweden. I have Cole Perfetti. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Six overall, 111 points, 61 games played. Um, I, when I, well, just looking straight at the stats, obviously you look, there's kind of a comparison, a, a similar comparison to him and Marco Rossi. Uh, they're both centermen. Uh, both of them had that playmaking ability with the hockey IQ. And I think for Anaheim, it, it really is adding to the cupboards. You have uh, Trevor Zegras, you have Isaac Lunderstrom, you have Maxime Comtois, and I think the list goes on. Um, I think this is just another guy to add to that stacked cupboard that Anaheim has. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, seventh, who do you guys got there? Daniel. Um, I have... This is where I got Marco Rossi. All right. So, yeah, same thing that we kind of talked about before. Uh, great score. He could play center. It, it reminds me of, like... Okay, it reminds me of, like, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Like, not by the size or the style of play, but more of, like, let's see if we could play him at center kind mm-hmm. of thing. Like, you take that flyer on him, and I think that's what the Devils are going to do. Like, they already have Jack Hughes... But they already have, like, Nico Hishier. But, you know, I know, like, throughout the season, they put Hishier on, like, the wing. And they saw how that kind of worked. Um, to be honest, like, it just adds more depth down the middle for them. I know that the way you kind of saw how they played this year, it was pretty disastrous. But, you know, I don't trust those two young guys kind of right now going, like, this is my future. And if we can move them here and there around the wing, like, I don't think you could kind of say like okay that's my set in stone centers for the future mm-hmm. okay. so just this again keep adding to it right. it's like kind of an insurance policy like especially out of the top five okay. mm-hmm. um i think i don't know if adam has this name here or has this name a little bit later <clears throat> but at seventh overall i have jake sanderson um i have him a little later yeah i well i think you know, you look at what 
New Jersey was looking for. I think he's better than K. Like the draft boards I was looking at had them. Ha- it was weird because they had Jake Sanderson kind of all over the place. Some of them had him higher. Some of them had them lower. But I, I look at Caden, uh, Caden Gooley, who I have drafted uh, later on in the draft. I think this pick makes more sense for New Jersey. Um, he's, you know, he. They're looking for D. What was the one thing that we got out of the Taylor Hall trade? Is that, is that, um, New Jersey wanted defensive prospects. And yeah, you know this in part, this part, this player in particular, it might be a couple of years. You know he's going to North Dakota next year, but I think he could be a solid uh, addition for their team. Fair enough. Uh, I have Alexander Holtz actually, uh, just because at this point of the draft, I started asking myself the question: Is it better to draft for position, or do we go to a point where it's the best player available? If Alex Holtz, I see that apparently the, apparently the belief is, um, as a quick disclaimer, by the way, all the sort of the stuff that I found, I want to give credit to Cosentino, of course, Elite Prospects, Hockey DB, um, Dauber Hockey is a lot of the stuff I found in my scouting reports and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the belief of Alex Holtz is he's going to be a goal scorer, and I don't think that's the type of player you can pass on. Uh, also... I just have I love right wingers. I don't know what it is. I just love them. And Holtz is a guy I wish somehow he could fall to Montreal. But uh, yeah, uh, number eight. This is where I have Cole Perfetti because I look at it and I'm like, all right. This is also a guy I wish the Habs could get, but I don't think he's going to fall the ninth. But happens. Um, and above all else, like there's always these guys are always skilled up there. He's got some good character about him. Mm-hmm. Well, Above all else. And what do you need in Buffalo? Hopefully some different culture besides the different... Like, he's going to be a great player. That's not a doubt. But I, I just think... And I don't want, but like, character to be, you know, the only thing while you draft him. But, I mean, it, it's really Buffalo. They could take any player out of this draft. And, like, like is that going to really change anything? <laughs> Get a young kid with a good attitude. And hopefully in a year or two, you got yourselves figured out with Jack Eichel. And maybe this kid can help around that. What about you guys? Uh, Alex, you want to go first? At or you want me to go first? Or I can go eighth overall. I have Alexander Holtz. Um, he won't be here for a few years because um, he signed in SHL, and I can't even pronounce that name. Yeah, I tried Jew- to as well. Gar- Jew Gardens? That, the Jew Gar- that was close enough. Um, we apologize goal, for our Swedish he, translations. Yeah, he's a goal scorer. Uh, it, for me, it was a toss up with these two guys uh, between Hit Holtz and Raymond because uh, Raymond's going to be drafted right after uh, Holtz. But I think obviously you said it like goals, goals, goals. Like this is the guy. It just seems like Buffalo is going to take because mm-hmm. who doesn't like goal scoring? Exactly. I like it. All right, awesome. All right, um, I'm happy to announce this one. So, you know, checking the Sabres' prospects and everything, seeing where they struggled this year and what they really, really need. Um, you know, they have a lot of forwards already. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of defensemen already. <laughs> I know he's been dying so to I'd, say this. I'd, yes, I'll take Yaroslav <laughs> Askarov, eighth overall here. And this is why. So... Two things. I don't trust any of their goaltenders right now in the NHL. Okay. At, That's at all. And I don't trust them either. Yeah. The last two years coming into this draft, like their number one prospect was Uko Pekka Lukunin. Yeah. You know, he dominated the real juniors. But this is a guy that you're looking at, you know, his save percentage on the Rochester Americans was a point eight seven four. Oh, this year and he's currently like before the season uh was suspended, he's in the ECHL. Uh, so, you know, huge risk, but I'll take the goaltender here. They have never had a goalie for the future since really Ryan Miller, and that has been a while. Or even Dominic Hasek, if you want to go with that further back. But, you know, I'm not comparing him to Dominic Hasek, but I'm just saying, like, the history of the Sabres goaltending luck. Yeah. So I'll pick the guy here. You know, Buffalo still has a lot of things to figure out. This guy's not going to come in right away. Gonna be mm-hmm. in the KHL for a while. Also, he's a goalie. You know, you never really know, but you know, I'll pick him here. Fair enough. 
Ninth. Who you got, Alex? Uh, Lucas Raymond. All right. Fro I would be very okay. Two uh, two very way good two. Well, he's a good two way player, and I think it's just again adding to the forward prospects that Montreal already has. I like it, Daniel. I have Anton Lundell going to Montreal. Oh, I hate you! I hate you! I didn't even put. No. I think it's on my list. No. Sorry, give your. I apologize, Daniel. Give your reasoning why a guy with third line center ceiling is going to be Montreal selection. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Really? You think that? I don't know. Just we don't. We don't. We don't know what we have in him yet. Like our Dahab's gonna might have in him yet. Like you know, yeah. he's had the international experience. He's been in a lot of leagues. You know, he might he might surprise, but I think he's a solid guy. I think Montreal would take care. Wasn't there injury issues? There were. It's like I don't know. Like we're best case scenario. I, I keep using this 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 episode. Best case scenario, you take an injured guy and you get like a Morgan Riley out of it. Worst case scenario, you get a Brett Conley, who went six to two thousand and ten, and you Not know it's, he still still became solid. Stanley Cup champion, right? Stanley yeah, Stanley Cup champion. And then got paid to, in Florida. You want to know where I put Lundell? Where? I, I put him 17. Oh, I, you <laughs> went that far? I didn't even get that far. I just oh. saw I saw the, the safe pick 39 center. And, you know, I don't get the hell out of here. Um, I actually have Jack Quinn. Okay. Because uh. the word of him is apparently he's gotten a lot of attention and he's handled it, handled it very, very well. Yeah. And he kind of... 50 goal thing with the Ottawa 67s, and I think something that we got to remember when it comes to these prospects, if you have the confidence to deal with a lot of attention at this age, it's something that I admire a lot, and I think you need if you're going to play in a market like Montreal. Yeah. So, I really like Jack Quinn, and that's why I would, uh, also a safe two-way guy, apparently, for a nice um, yeah, for a nice rounded out game, so I have a right wing Jack Quinn. You know, Ninth he overall. you know he finished second in uh, goals. I'm just, Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shut up. Let me guess. Yeah, Nick uh, Robinson. I don't know who finished in front of him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fun fact, Nick Robinson is half Filipino. Uh, is he? Oh, really? Yeah. Gosh. Would yeah. he be the first Filipino to play in the league? No, his no I'm Matt Dumba. Oh, how about his brother, Jason? I don't know. Where's Jason right now? Dallas. Isn't he young? He played oh. one game. No, he's he, yeah. he plays for Dallas. He played one game, oh. I think, this year. Oh, okay. So, um, you're saying Dumba's? Matt Dumba. Yeah, Matt Dumba is half Filipino, half Romanian. That's cool. Hey, out of boy Dumba. Uh, a little overrated is Dumba, in my opinion, by the way. Overrated? Uh, and, yeah, oh. yeah. I, he's, I think he's great. He's um, underrated. I, <laughs> oh, Lord. Daniel's just trying to, Daniel's trying to start a war this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daniel, are you going to try and tell me that Dylan Holloway should go 10th? Because you know who I think should go 10th? And this is tenth. this is only because if New Jersey get that 10th pick, because I don't remember the conditions on, I think it's only, it's lottery protected is that Arizona pick, right? It's a bunch of crazy stuff. Like Taylor, it's also like dependent on if Taylor Hall resigns or something. And then there's another condition with like the second round pick. I don't know, like it or becomes a first. So if this goes as it is, I think the, this, it's only if this team has this pick. I think the Devils would be fools not to take Azrakov. That yeah. goal. Yes. But by the way, yeah, for some context here for the listeners, well, I think if you're still listening to a draft preview, you have to be hardcore. But just in case, Azrakov is a very highly touted goalie, far and away the best in this draft. But the problem with him is, A, he's a goalie, so there's always hesitation to take him in the first round. And B, he's still under contract in Russia for a few years now. The important thing is there that Valtteri put Coles in the last draft, or the 2019 draft, clearly fell an attempt to Vancouver. He had top five skills and all that, but it was just his contract scenario is what made him drop. So I, I'm not going to lie. Originally, I had him around 15, 16, just because those factors you know, went into my mind. But if the Devils have have that pick i think they'd be fools not to take him at uh 10 okay. yeah so i have askarov at uh 10 as well uh the condition on the arizona pick is if arizona's first round selection in the 2020 draft is in the top three the devils will receive the coyotes first round pick in 2021 
All right. Okay. So Thank unless you. it's top three, they are drafting. With mm -hmm. Arizona's pick. Daniel, who okay. you have a tenth? Since Askarov uh, already went to Buffalo for me in eighth, um, I was going to say, depending on where New Jersey is right now, but I think they're those type of teams that they're kind of on the fly going, like where we could put adjustments here and there. So I would take Braden Schneider here. All right. Um, great player, a lot of size. I know I sound like Brian Burke right now. A lot of size, but this guy's a scorer. He's played in the Super Series. He's played in WHL. He played at the Helinka Gretzky Cup. Um, it's kind of guy that you know he he just keeps getting better every year. He puts up the number. He puts up the. I know that he had a bit of penalty trouble uh, two years ago, but I think it's it's gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, one of those guys that. I think they want to see where he kind of goes and if he signs right away. Because I had Jake Sanderson here, but the fact that he's committed to North Dakota, I'd put him a bit lower. Fair enough. Alex? I, I have Askarov. Same reason like as you. Out of yeah. 11? Or Wait, sir, I or have what? him at... So you have, it at, ha have him at 10. I have him at 10 yeah. as well. Okay, all right. Um, okay, and then might as well, Alex, who do you have for 11 then? Uh, Jack Quinn. Jack Quinn! Uh, Great he, 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 I mean, you said it. He had a, I think this year was really his breakout year uh, in, in the OHL for Ottawa. And, you know, there's a lot of talks. There was a lot of talk at the beginning of the year, at, you know, his trading over the summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really showed at the beginning of the season. He had 89 points uh, in 62 games. I think you know him going back to the O uh, the OHL next year is really going to help him, and he's probably going to grow again. So mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's a big pick for 11 Minnesota. All right, old Daniel. <laughs> okay, I have Connor Zary. Going to the wild. Um, that sounds like a Minnesota player. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 86 points, 57 games, had 651 penalty minutes. Um, played for the WHL All-Stars. Uh, it's the kind of guy where I think the wild really need someone like this. They don't have, I mean, they have to just get young everywhere, but I think especially at center, they need that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Mika Koivu is still holding the fort. Yeah. Um, I actually, I have Zaria at 11 as well. Uh, he's been, apparently the worry on him is he's consistent. And um, that is something that's the worry? Zaria, yeah, Connor Zaria. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Zaria? Okay, sorry, sorry. Zaria? Yeah. I thought you said worry. Uh, sorry, my bad. No, no. And at 12, I have, listen, Winnipeg, if anything, I think, I think they need stable D-men. Oh. And apparently this guy is that kind of smart, complimentary defenseman. And that's where I have uh, Caden Gooley. Okay. Fellas, who's got 12? Um, I actually have – I don't know if you have this guy on the list. He probably fell um, simply because he was injured. But I think this is the guy that is injured and you take the chance on is – uh, Hendrix Lapierre. He only played 19 games. He played in the queue. Uh, only played 19 games. Had 17 points. And he plays center. Um, you know, you look at the, the Jet center depth. Blake Wheeler isn't getting any younger. Uh... I, that's pretty much anyone I get. Like Mark Shai, it's Mark Shifley. That's is there like yes, Jack Roslovic obviously too, but we've Adam Lock, their third liner. Yeah, but you want some big like this guy seems like he can he can fill a top six spot, and I think they take a chance on Hendrix Lapierre. They've needed a center for a while now. Those stupid that that dumb Hayes deal. This um the um. Paul's the, uh, Paul's Stasny. Stasny, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Thirteen. This is where I have uh Sanderson. Thirteen. Uh, I have Connor okay. Zari. Zari, mm -hmm. however you say it. Oh, sorry, I didn't say my twelfth pick. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, sorry, sorry, Come sorry, on, sorry. Adam. No problem. 
Um, I have Maverick Bork, one of the best names in the draft. Oh, yeah. a bud, a bud. <laughs> um, I like him a lot. Um, helps with the Jets depth and center again. He could go to the wing. Um, seventy-one points, forty-nine games in the queue. Uh, played in the Super Series. Um, he's played in a lot of leagues. So played a lot of international tournaments as well. So I like the guy. All right. All right, then, Daniel, since I skipped over you there, um, who did you have? Crap, I'm so – there's so much here. Okay, who did you have 13? I had 13? Sanders. Yeah. Okay, I have Caden Gooley going there. Uh, we said a lot about him. Six foot three, 40 points, 64 games, 57 penalty minutes. Uh, also played at the Helenka Gretzky Cup, so I like the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex. 13, I have Connor Zari. Zari. Apologies, I don't know how to say his last name. Um <laughs> I look at what we were being told about the Rangers. Uh, you know, they, when they were looking at trading Chris Kreider, they wanted forward prospects. They want they didn't want no D prospects. Um, and, you know, they also made that trade early. Uh, I think it was deadline day, bringing in Julian Gauthier from the Carolina yeah. Hurricanes. So I think bringing in this guy, you know, he can play the wing. He can play down the middle. I think this guy is pretty much what they need. All right. Um, Daniel, I did ask you this time. I remembered. Um, okay. Alex, why don't you give me who you have 14th? Uh, Dylan Holloway. Why? Strong two-way player. Who's Who did I put 14th? Florida. I think at this point... They just need anything, you know. You're 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 yeah. trading. You just got rid of Vincent Trocheck. Yes. Well, they they do have some uh, center prospects with um, uh, Henrik Borgström. Yeah. I don't remember if Alexi Hipilniemi plays center or wing, but I know Borgström is, cent- is a center prospect for sure. But hey, well, no he thing- also plays the wing, right? Dylan Holloway also plays the left side. So strong two. You you can't go wrong with a strong two way guy. Who can play mm-hmm. down the middle and down the wing? All right, Danny boy. Okay, I am going to take same thing. Dylan Holloway. Um, Florida needs a bit of everything. Um, go for the guy that you know he's playing at University of Wisconsin right now, I believe. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just kind of guy that either he signs now or they kind of wait for him to kind of do a bit of his education. And then he comes in because like, I think Florida isn't a super – like, you know, picking here. You're not going to rush the guy. Education. Education, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, funny, I think this is the first time since Lafreniere we've all agreed. I also have Dylan Holloway at 14. Uh, but in my notes, I say who cares Cole Caulfield because he's going to be – I'm assuming if he continue, if he does play – because I think you said he plays wing as well, Alex. If he plays center – He's, or even if he's on left wing, I sorry, I don't remember which one he's in. He'll probably be playing with Cole Caulfield, I'm assuming, next year, so that would be good for both of them. Yeah, um, yeah he'll probably go back to school. Um, so, yeah, by the way, Dylan Holloway. Um, do you guys remember a player by the name of Bud Holloway? Absolutely yes. Absolutely not. Yes. I don't think they're related, but what do you remember about Bud Holloway, Daniel? I like his first name. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> He was, uh, he was the captain of Montreal's AHL team back then. He only got like a few NHL games and uh, just a good guy. Uh, didn't I remember that story, yeah, like when he was being called up. Yeah, he was uh, just one of those super nice guys. I always, I can always find him in NHL um, in 20 in like the, um, in the free agency. And whenever I see him, I bring him back and uh, I just, I put him in the, in the <laughs> on, AHL. It's- on the fourth line. No, no, no. In the, no, he's good enough to play in the top six AHL, but oh. like. Him and for some reason Jake Evans never grows, even though he's Nelly Jeller now. So I always have like my center depth is Bud Holloway, um, Jake Evans, and like whoever whatever prospects I'm trying to develop there. Anyway, to finish off my guys, 15th I have Dawson Mercer. He's apparently a very happy player. He's very efficient. So I just wrote down in my notes he's like Brandon Gallagher. Okay. I, I don't have that much more to say about Dawson Mercer. At uh, 15. For the Columbus Blue Jackets, I have Caden Gooley. Mm-hmm. Um, he's big. Daniel mentioned it earlier. Earlier, I think you said he was six foot three, and surprisingly a good skater. Don't see that a whole lot. Uh, obviously, two way. 
two-way guy. Uh, can you just, like, you're telling me that this doesn't just sound like a John Tortorella type guy? Big guy who can skate and just lay people out? Well, that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. Right? He's a good player. Just sounds like a John Tortorella type and guy. And he st- stinks on the power play every time I put him up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For uh, me? Yeah. Um... It's the same thing too. Columbus, they're kind of, you don't really know where they are in a way with things, but there's a lot of uncertainty. Like, you know, they're still pretty consistent, but, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties with their defensive. The, well, the de- defense right now, like, I don't think Ryan Murray is going to be there long term. Uh, they still have to figure out extensions, like, especially for Rorensky. So I'll take uh, Jake Sanders in here. It's a kind of defenseman, I think, that. You know they need and someone. Yeah, they're gonna wait on. He's gonna go to. He's already committed to North Dakota. Um, so we'll see where that goes. All right. Um, that's it for the lottery picks. Do we? Uh, is there any like special name you guys want to mention from your later picks or anything? No, I don't. Uh, really. Jake Neighbors. I love that name. Jake Neighbors. You know what? I loved him enough where I put him thirty first. Thirty first. Yeah, again, I had um, Lundell at 17. I've moved up William Weylander to 16 because I liked his name. Um, you mentioned LaPierre. I had him 24th. Um, beside that, yeah. I, I had, no, my I, apologies. Another great name, Antonio cool. Stranges. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. See, you know what? I At the beginning of the year, I think he was, like, top 15. Because I remember mm-hmm. people talking about Antonio Stranges. He's playing in London. And and the, and I saw was scrolling through Twitter and this guy, there was a highlight clip package of just him and this guy looked like a beast. Mm-hmm. If there's a na- if there's two names, he's one of them. And the only reason this I'm saying this name is because he was on Thirty One Thoughts is uh, Jeremy Poirier. Yes, he's playing in. Oh, the name's not come. St. John's is it St. John's? St. John's Sea Dogs? Say, yeah, I think so. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. find, I'll find out. Um, right. But, th- yeah, those are the two names. Another name I really liked was Noel Gundler. <laughs> right wing and apparently can score goals. So uh, who, whoever has 21, Noel Gunner, you better take him. Right winger.